Hey gang, well, uh, thank you to everyone that sent me text messages and uh, have made comments along the way on uh, my 255 XD since I received it here about a month ago. Um, I know I kind of went dark here for the past week or so and uh, with the holiday and then trying to actually work out some of my own issues with the boat, I wanted to hold off on doing some videos until I felt comfortable and confident talking a little bit more about some of the, uh, some of the things or my thoughts on the boat so far. Um, I received one specific uh, request from a gentleman who wanted to get on the phone. He's getting ready to receive his, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna connect and talk a little bit more. But I wanted to give everybody kind of a breakdown of what I think so far on the 2021 Yamaha 255 XD. Um, first off, I know that everyone is still waiting on boats. There are a lot of delays that are out there right now, and uh, having talked with Yamaha corporate. Uh, they feel terrible about it as well. In fact, I'll post down in the bottom of this link uh, or this video a link to the president of Yamaha Marine uh, who has basically put a, a message out about the delays, not, not really with COVID, but around the snows and cold down in, in the Houston area. So Texas last year when they got hit with that snowstorm. Um, it really impacted not just Yamaha, but the entire marine and RV industry. Uh, before I get into it, I want everyone to know that um, even though I'm a journalist, I purchased this boat. So what I tell you is based 100% on my feedback, uh, not as a journalist, not paid by anybody to, to tell you anything about this boat other than what my uh, unbridled response is. So let's really get into it. Uh, first and foremost for the new year, and I will have a full actual YouTube video that comes out that really gets into B-roll and videos and you can see more of, of it right now. I just want to sit here and talk to you about it. Um, let's talk about fit and finish because that's a question that I've seen kind of come up on some of the forums. So I think since Yamaha moved this boat so quickly through the production process, I think this first round of boats is going to be hit with with some minor flaws. And I don't mean flaws that are are game changing, I mean fit and finish. So for example, with me, I've got some fit and finish issues on my boat. There's a trim piece at the very rear of the boat, uh, right next to where the wet sound speaker is. It, when I picked it up at the dealership, it, it was already starting to come out of the fiberglass. And the dealership that I, I work with, Anderson Marine here in Middle Tennessee, so just north of Nashville, um, they're awesome. Uh, Braxton said just hey keep a list and start writing it down and because it's under warranty they'll just fix them as they as they go along um, on the inside there is the I everyone uses it for storage but it's that little jump jump down area where you can put a, a bathroom inside the boat uh, with the big hull um, there's a trim piece that goes around the end the bottom trim piece is already coming out so you're gonna find some fit and finish issues um, on the inside on the passenger passenger side where this the seat is there's a, a big scratch in the black so it's black black plastic and there's kind of a white big scratch in there that was there and then up on the front dash uh, there's a spot where it almost looks like before they sprayed the gel coat or the, the final piece over the top of the plastic or the plastic wasn't cured properly it almost looks like a sheet of dust was put down and then they sprayed over the top of it so there's some things on the fit and finish of this that are a little bit of a concern, but they're not game changers for me. And I wanna premise it and start with, those are the fit and finish issues with the boat, but the performance of this boat is incredible. So two 1.8 liter motors that are supercharged. I've had this boat easily cruising up between 47 and 52, 53, and that's not full hammer down. Um, with four people in the boat, full hammer down, I have hit 57. And I think this boat on a glassy day uh, with little weight and, you know, maybe a quarter of a tank of gas, I think this boat could easily hit 60 miles an hour. And it's not even, it's not even topped out for that. So really cool, uh, really cool from the standpoint of all the performance on this boat for the first go around. And I think it's only going to get better. These engines are proven. So if you can work through some of the fit and finish details, the engine on this thing is going to be uh, really cool. Um, I've had a lot of questions come in about the surfing and the wakeboarding and the ballast. So I'm going to get right to those because I know that that is a key decision point. It was for me in moving out of my 242 Limited S to the 255 XD. Um, 
adding all the ballast in, so center ballast and two rear ballast, it actually works for surfing. Um, even with, I have a 14 year old and 11 year old, it even works for surfing with my wife driving. I can almost let go of the rope. Now I'm 6'3", 200 pounds, so that means I'm gonna need a much, much more sizable weight. It's a lot harder for me. And to be honest, I've only started surfing about a year ago. So I need a little bit more of that support before I'm able to let go. Now, Braxton and Anderson Marine has said he has put on a fat sack on that rear. So I do have my fat sack and I'll try it here at some point to add one more sack on there. It's a pain in the butt, but they have for this year relocated the cigarette lighter that you would use for your, your fat sack. They've relocated it to the rear. So it's great. You don't have to run from the steering wheel all the way to the back like you did on the previous boats. It's actually integrated into the rear. Very smart from Yamaha because they know that their ballast isn't gonna compete with a traditional wakeboard boat. So that's kind of cool. So you have that ability to put that in the rear now, keep it nice and simple. And if you really want to surf and get a good wave, I guarantee you're going to get an insane wave if you put that um, big ballast bag on the back. I think it's 650 pounds. So that's a ton of weight to add to the rear of the boat. Um, wakeboarding. I actually feel like the wake is better without the ballast filled. Um, we're still tuning it in, but I feel like I actually ride the wake better and can jump better with the boat without ballast. So we're gonna keep playing around with that, but it's not mon it's not a monster clean wave like a wakeboard boat, but it's doable. And again, I wanna premise this on the fact that we enjoy cruising and then, and then wake sports or, or water sports first. So I wanna make sure that's premised. We like to cruise up river. We've already got almost 30 hours on our boat and we've had it I don't know, three and a half, four weeks. And we're on Old Hickory Lake in Tennessee. So we've got a whole river system to go from the dam all the way east up river. Um, and, it, and so there's, you know, 400 miles of, of shoreline for us to cruise. So I'd say from, from the ease of the ballast system, it's great. It's all push button, you can control the levels. And then you've got two surf gates on the back. They're relatively easy to use. You have to hit the button. And then when you hit the button, you have to start the boat and then that will move out that surf gate. So the surf gate will, is just kind of an easy function, but it's going to take some playing around with. You kind of have to hit the button, turn on the motor, then hit the button and then it pops out. So you'll, you'll see there's a little bit of trickiness with it, but once you get it, you kind of get it figured out. So that kind of gives you some, some idea of what the, the, the ballast system is like. Um, there's also weights that you can put in the boat and I'm probably going to invest in those. So uh, again, Braxton, who is at Anderson Marine, he surfs, he's, he wakeboards, but he does give me kind of the 411. So we're gonna add some, some weights to the front of this. And he said there's, I think they come in 50 pound increments. So we're gonna put some weight in the front of this boat and maybe one or two in the rear left of the boat to help. Storage, which is my next thing, because I'm thinking about the weights, which leads me to storage. A lot less storage on this boat. So you have to plan for that. Um, we take the cover off, we leave the cover here on shore. Normally in my old boat, I'd put it in the front because I had so much storage in the back. But those two back seats that are behind the driver and passenger, those now have the fat sacks in them or the, the, the ballast containment areas. So you have no storage in there. You have to kind of take that into consideration. Driver side ballast, passenger side ballast and batteries. So that whole area to the back is now completely full of of non-storageable space. Uh, with that said, behind the driver, they put this kind of cool little A-frame storage cabinet area. I like it because that's where I store all my stuff. I'll take my hat off, my shirt, uh, and I'll put all my stuff in there. All of my ski ropes go under the two seats in the back where the ballast tanks are. I can fit them in nice and thin along the top. Behind the two seats, there are two opened, opening up areas for, uh, for buoys. Uh, for ropes, for tie downs, that all fit there. Those are the two new seats that move and slide forward. So you have storage there and then you have storage in the front. Uh, and of course you have kind of the, the, I just call it the bathroom area that you have storage for as well. Our life jackets go in there or we'll hang them off the, the towers when they're wet and then we'll put the extra seat cushions in there as well. All right, that takes me to the next part, which is the, the seats in the rear that slide forward and back. We didn't think we were gonna love them. We absolutely love them. Again, 6'3", my legs are kind of hanging over the end like this, but man, it doesn't matter. They're so comfortable. In fact, yesterday, my wife, she laid full length across the back and it was perfect. So um, what's great is Yamaha has provided 
a full U shape now in that rear with a, a, a backrest seat that comes down. So you can put the seats make a U, you can put a, a, a piece in the middle and a seat in. Well, guess what? If you want to lay across that back, you pull the middle piece out and then you can actually take that cushion that you'd be sitting on to make a U and slide it all the way back. Now you've got full a full bed across the rear. It's so awesome. And then up front, of course, you've got a lot of room up front. I do want to talk about the room up front as well. Again, I keep noting my height and height for me is, I'll probably come right out of frame. So height for me is always an issue and I'm leg tall. So I can actually sit with my back against the, the seat here and on my old boat, my feet would touch the front. Now I can actually sit here full, full length and not have any issues at all touching the front of the boat. So that's really, really cool as well um, because it's a lot, it's wider and it's longer. So there's a lot of functionality with the boat as well. I want to talk about the connect screen uh, and I also want to talk about the new push button. So when you're sitting in the captain's seat, and of course this will be contained in the YouTube video down the road, but you, you can get the picture if you're a yam yammer, you know. You got your connect screen, which is new this year, and then on the side you've got a panel that comes down. You no longer have to just rely on hitting the bilge and hitting the blower on the touch screen. When you're moving fast down the river, it's hard to like, you have to go to a screen and navigate down and push these buttons. Now you've got easy buttons right on the side. You want navigation, boom, you hit it. You want blower, you boom, you hit it. You want bilge, boom, you hit it. And it will activate it all through the connects on the screen. And that is super, super cool. Uh, we really, really, really dig that feature. Um, and, and that makes everything easy. So we were, we were enjoying some fireworks about 40 minutes up river, coming back at night. Um, it was really nice to be able to just kind of hit some things in here and move on with the exception of the dock lights. I really wish the dock lights were over on that right side as opposed to on the connect screen because you need the dock lights at night. So when you're out on the middle of the river and you've got somebody that does not have navigation lights on and you want to hit them up right quick, boom, you can hit that light switch. So there is an accessory button. I think I am going to put an LED somewhere on this that I can put on at night, maybe up on the top of the uh, front of the, the wake tower. I might put some kind of LED light up there and that will help. So if I do the LED light up there, that it might help at night and give me some, some good and added light for, uh, for being out there on the river. Some other highlights of the 255 XV. Let's talk about the new sound system that's in there from Wet Sounds. I can tell you right now, it is incredible. You want to compete with wake boats, you definitely can do that with this boat. And again, for the purposes of what our family uses it for, a lot more cruising during the middle of the day. You have the functionality of playing your music while at high speed. You can hear it crystal clear while you're out there on the boat. If you're surfing or wakeboarding crystal clear as well, you've got the wet sound subwoofer, you've got two speakers in the rear, two speakers in the middle, two speakers up on the front, and then two speakers up top and a bar across the back. So you have a lot of really cool functionality and the new zone control on the connect system allows you to control the treble and the bass inside that zone. So if you want more bass, you just go to the zone control, you hit where the bass is and it'll show you a picture of the boat. You just boom, hit the bass, put it all the way up. It works really, really well. All right, a couple more things and then we'll round it out for you uh, and we'll get to that YouTube video. We'll make sure we have that rocking out for you guys some here, sometime here soon uh, where you have more imagery that you can follow along with. Of course, I'm going to do a lot more other videos that are short as well. A um, couple other things just to follow in line with. My biggest concern uh, with the Bimini on this boat was that it was going to be too small. Turns out this Bimini is just fine. The one on our previous boat, the 242, uh, that Limited S, it had such a bigger Bimini. But I saw online this morning uh, on this group page that someone's coming out with some extensions that you'll be able to connect to the front of your uh, to the front of your um, high house right here. So you'll be able to come out with a, a new cover and pop it in on the front. I think if they can master pull that, like get that in, I think that'd be super awesome. Maybe even a zipper along the front that makes it nice and super tight. But right now, don't need it. Don't think there's a real purpose for it because we're getting plenty of shade with the boat as is. Uh, let me see a couple other things I can point out for the boat so far. I know I talked about that turning radius being different. Um, paddle shifters, yes, the paddle shifters. So uh, the first, the first day of using the paddle shifters, I was like, man, I can't believe I threw down on these paddle shifters. I wasn't sure 
if they were going to be something that I was going to use. Now that I've figured out and used them for about two or three weeks, I can't imagine being without them. So I can come in and out of this uh, slip right here under like we had a big windstorm kind of come through and I had the boat parked on the side because we're on a we're on a dam system where the water level was too low to get it in on on the, the dock using the paddle shifters was awesome because I can control without having to bring my hand off so I'm not having to go on and off and steer at the same time I have the ability to control forward reverse forward reverse I can go in forward if I start to go this way this way I just hit the reverse and it turns the front turns the rear it's a really really cool feature and given the price point on it I think it only increased the price to two grand maybe three I think it's worth it and there are a couple different reasons why one I like it and I think it's awesome Two, my wife coming into here, she's such a good boat driver, but it's just giving her another tool because I drive most of the time. It's just giving her another tool to make it even easier. And for my, my son at 14, when he, he's now kind of playing around with the boat when we're on the water, training him early and giving him kind of the cool tools and technology to play around with it, I think make a difference. Uh, lastly, and one of the reasons I had a delay on getting this quick video up for you all is that um, we had our starboard engine go out uh, and I panicked. I was like, oh, brand new boat, three weeks in, starboard engine went out. We got back uh, probably three or four days ago, evening, uh, pulled out the clean out, stuck my hand in both of them, didn't really feel anything, but it was dark and I was tired and I wanted to get inside, so I just stuck my hand in. Well, the next morning I came out and by when I did, when I came in, the check engine light went on, it went red, and I noticed that the P valve over there was not, there was no water coming out of the starboard engine, so that meant overheating. Um, so I got really nervous, uh, and I couldn't get that sound to go off. So the next morning I got up, I came out here, I stuck my hand way down deep into the clean outs, and on the front side was a baseball hat, like a wadded up around the propeller. So it was totally in there, caked in, and that immediately told me what my problem was. I found a way to get that hat out, so the hat was out, and after I got the hat out, um, I figured that the boat would reset itself, and it didn't. So we went and took the boat out, water was filtering through, sorry, bug, well, water was filtering through fine, no issues on the water, and um, it took yesterday, middle of the day, after about 15 battery and cycles through on the battery and the ignition on off uh, for it to actually reset itself and it did. And once it did, it was like screaming the happy dance, the boat was fine. So no issues on that. The computer system is intuitive enough to clear those sensors out. Uh, again, both of these engines are proven. They've got the superchargers on them this year. It's gonna be super fast and fun. So there you go, kind of a quick first roundup of the 255 XD. I hope this has helped you. Uh, I will be doing a series of individual videos, and if you want one, just put it in the comments. Like, hey man, will you surf behind your boat at your height and weight uh, with no bag? Sure. If you say, hey, can you throw that that uh, big bag out behind it? Absolutely, I'll do it. So just post in the comments and, and share this to as many people as you can. I really want to help people make a good buying decision on this. I out the door these new boats. Ooh, I'm going to give you a little bit some inside intel, um, and not from Yamaha, but I've I've heard this. I only tell you I've heard it. Um, these boats are running anywhere from just around 90 grand to 100 thousand dollars, and for next year, not substantiated yet, but I've heard that the price might go up. Um, so the price might go up of these and. If you can try and get your hands on one now from a reservation standpoint, I think they're going to honor that price point into next year. Again, not coming from corporate, but I have heard that rumor out there. So I hope you all like this video. Um, I will do one shout out. My new apparel company, Rooster Nation Apparel, uh, is now up and online. It's it's all about the middle, the middle of the lake, man. Coming from the west coast where uh, you got the ocean and you got Lake Havasu to here in the heart of our country, uh, just north of Nashville. It's all about boating experience and we and my brother-in-law and I created an apparel line called Rooster Nation. Shirts, hats, hoodies, 
it's all about that experience about being out on the water with your family and your friends and your kids and just enjoying it so uh, we rock the rooster wherever we go it started by sitting out here on this dock before we even had a boat watching the the rooster tails of bass boats go by every day so if you're into fishing you're into the wake sports you're just into a good time with the family support us man we could use your help uh, as we start this new uh, endeavor with rooster apparel uh, roosternationapparel.com so Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, comment, 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 because I will shoot any video you want on this boat and uh, get it done. So hope you guys have a great day. Hope you had a great fourth and uh, enjoyed this video.